Hi, everyone, and welcome to this interesting session on the future of digital comments, commerce and, more specifically, the impact of payments on digital uh, commerce. And as most of you would have seen, is there is a lot of activity going on around payments. We've seen a massive wave of innovation happening over the last couple of years. And that innovation, on the one hand, obviously changes the experience for the customer, but on the other hand, it also really increases the level of complexity, the fragmentation, and also the need for merchants to stay on top of this, this fast-moving um, area, in, uh, which is quite essential for their business. So today, I want to give you a, a short overview over the future of payments as we can envision it for the moment. And for me, that really means uh, we are moving towards uh, uh, primarily frictionless and, and data-driven payments experience. So um, let me start with some of the critical success factors for uh, digital payments, just to give you an overview of what I want to cover later on in this presentation. So obviously, one key part of this payment experience is the need to boost conversion rates. Uh, we have um, payments particularly insert, uh, insert some elements of friction in a smooth payout process. So merchants really need to pay attention on how to, to remove that complexity and make that experience as seamless as possible for the customer. The second challenge, and that is closely related with the, with the conversion rates, is the need to balance really the convenience as well with the compliance and the security elements of a payments transaction. And here we have also seen a lot of movement over the last couple of years and just this, this generally the latest version of the, the SCA, the, so the, the requirements for strong customer authentication was, is applicable to all e-commerce uh, based uh, card not present transaction. Um, then the next area is really the focus of, uh, on, on cost efficiencies by, by getting smarter about how you route transactions and payment uh, transactions in your organization and really bet on the, on the best providers that really support your specific needs. Lastly, there's also then this, this growing data opportunity uh, that really gives you more insights into your operations, but also increasingly better insights into your customers and that ultimately could then translate again into higher conversion rates, into more sales and so on. So ultimately, it's really about picking the right payment solution that really fits some merchant specific needs. So let me quickly start with this high level overview over the checkout process. And uh, I don't need to tell you that you are very familiar with that but I'm just focused on the elements that are really disrupting a smooth flow for this, this checkout process. And that's every time the customer has to enter information. So obviously starts the moment they go on your website, they need to accept cookies, they need to um, give you the permission to track their movements. Uh, already the first disruption in the smooth process. And a lot of people are already getting annoyed by that. But again, compliance is mandating the use of those, those um, pop-up notifications to kind of get the approval to use the data. Second step, after they have selected the goods they want to buy, usually they want to get a better deal. So that means they have to browse for coupons, they need to browse for discounts. Very often those have to be entered manually. Again, a disruption to that smooth process. Then it gets really to the, to the cumbersome parts, and that's when they have to enter personal data. And it's obviously understood that uh, a merchant wants to know the customer, and the more data they extract, the hope is that they can get better, uh, can offer them a better sales experience moving forward, or that they can sell more because they can maybe send some contextual offers to them. But for a customer, this very often is an extremely tedious and cumbersome process. And usually when you look at analytics, this is really where the, the abandoned rates, the card abandonment rates go up. And really depending on the merchant, this can already go all the way towards a really creepy experience if the customer doesn't really understand why a merchant is asking so much personal information. Then we're ending up at the, at the payments part of that journey. So customers need to enter the payment data. And obviously, there is a lot of concern about this. Payment data is quite confidential. It's highly private. 
Uh, nobody wants them to be leaked. And we have seen the instances where merchants were hacked and card data was kind of distributed freely on the internet or in the darknet. So there is a high level of concern for customers to really share that data because they have to really trust that the merchant is handling that payments data reliably and securely. And then with the latest round of um, regulation, uh, reg regulatory, regulatory updates, now obviously the authentication bit is also getting more cumbersome because every card-based um, uh, e-commerce payment now has to be really uh, or requires two-factor authentication. So the customer not just needs to, to enter, yes, I want this ball, but they need to confirm that they want, uh, that they really uh, are themselves or that they are the owner of that, that card. So as you can see, quite a lot of steps that can really make or break that payment experience. And uh, in the next step, I really want to talk a bit about what merchants can do to really boost conversion rents and um, move away from this, this friction that is um, caused by, by this, this tedious uh, checkout process. So the first recommendation is really focused on essential information. So that comp comprehensive form filling is really the most important driver of card abandonment. And so merchants should really focus to get essential data first and then really look, think about other ways or more uh, attractive ways to, to um, tease out additional information, whether that's through incentives, through discounts, through membership benefits, um, and, and really design that checkout process as simple, as user-friendly, and as, as transparent as possible. Then um, the next step is also about how can I make the, or can I reduce the friction of this, this payment process? And a lot of customers have a lot of experience with digital purchasing, and many of them have their prefer preferred ways to pay. So for a merchant, it really makes sense to look at their customers and understand what kind of uh, payment types do they prefer, and then increasingly move towards offering them or giving them the choice to really pick the different payment providers where they may already have a discount to really minimize that friction to, uh, and, and that data entry. So providers such as PayPal or Amazon Pay, they're offering this one-click payments where a customer can really just um, connect to, the, um, to their, their preferred payment provider and all their addresses, their name, the payment information are all updated in the payment. So a really seamless payment process. Lastly, um, there is uh, now a lot of new tools becoming available and a lot of payment services providers go out and uh, give merchants additional options to uh, make that purchase process more attractive to give the customers more choice, but also these services always in introduce more um, complexity and more friction in the process. And I'm really talking about things pay by installment or add an insurance, uh, reduce the shipping cost or multi-currency payments. So all of that might be interesting to specific customers, but certainly they are not relevant to all customers. And here it's again down to making the informed choice and really balance the friction versus the value of those optional services. The next area I want to talk about briefly uh, is regulation. And as most of you would probably have heard from their payment service providers, is that from the 1st of January this, this year, SCA, which is Strand Customer Authentication, is applied to all card not present transactions. And that means uh, you cannot just get away with asking the customer for the password to authenticate that payment, but now it's a two-factor authentication, so you need um, an additional element that means either something that the customer knows or that the customer possesses or that the customer or that's inherent to the customer, so like a fingerprint, for instance. And this SCA is really mandatory for most of the card non-present uh, non transactions. And this definitely introduces another element of friction because you need to pull out your mobile phone to really authenticate this, this transaction. If you don't have it here, you cannot complete the purchase. So uh, particularly in this uh, transformation period where customers are not used to this, this is really uh, leading to a, a search of, of card abandonment. So let's really talk about uh, SCA in a bit more detail and what merchants can do to really reduce the number of those um, two-factor authentications. And there are a lot of exemptions 
that um, merchants can, can go for. So obviously the easiest way is you offer other alternative card, uh, uh, alternatives to card payments, such as for instance, account-based payments uh, or digital wallets or merchant initiated payments, such as a direct debit or request to pay, prepaid cards. So there are a lot of um, uh, types of transactions that are exempt from SCA. So offering those obviously limits uh, the friction in the pay uh, checkout process. The other, another um, exemption are low value transactions. So generally everything that's below 30 euros is SCA exempt, but this is also something that's defined by the specific issuer. Recurring transactions are also exempt. So uh, particularly transactions that have the same amount, the same pay, the same recurring cycle are exempt. And this is something that can also uh, help if you kind of ch uh, change the subscription model. So you can, yeah, you ch shift your business model towards more of a subscription model. I think the most powerful tool really here is transaction risk analysis. And that really looks at individual transactions and looks for abnormal behaviors in those, uh, in those transactions such as changes to the user's device or suspicious um, locations. But then it also really looks at the different participants or stakeholders in that payment process. So they look at the average fraud rate of a payment services provider or the acquirer and the issuer. And based on the lower those fraud rates are, the more uh, likely is it that those um, transactions are exempt from SCA. So it really becomes a competitive differentiator for when you pick your payment services providers to go for those with a lower fraud rate and therefore um, reducing uh, your, your SCA or increasing the, the SCA exemptions. Lastly, for those that are subject to SCA, there are now new tools available as well. So there is just a new release or new version of 3D Secure, which is something that uh, EMV launched a couple of years ago. So the 3, uh, 3D Secure 2.0 is really move, um, looking to make that, fric uh, that experience more frictionless, integrates with Apple Pay, for instance, or with the, with the uh, tools that a mobile phone offers. So that is also helping with this transformation. The next area I want to touch on is how can we really get more cost efficient when we process payments? And here it's really about getting smarter in how you route transactions. So ultimately, obviously, you want to give the customer choice and you want to give them convenience. But this really needs to be balanced with the reality of accepting payments. And that means merchants need to consider transaction cost and increasingly try to incentivize or nudge customers to lower cost transactions. So card payments are quite pricey. Now we have new tools at our disposal, such as, um, such as account-based payments that are also increasingly happening in real time, which have much lower transaction costs. You have direct debit also offering much lower transaction costs. And it's really uh, important for, uh, for merchants to understand what they can do to push down cost of, uh, of payments. So smart routing really is a key term that we've seen here and a lot of payment service providers are now offering smart routing support. For instance, they help uh, merchants to compare prices across different payment types about different payment providers. And uh, there is a slowly a trend towards more um, transparency when it comes to fees, when it comes to acceptance rates. These are all things that merchants really need to consider when they pick the right permit, uh, payment service providers and uh, also understand what's the value in really moving or incentivizing a customer to move from a card payment to an account-based payment. How much value can I, how much cost can I actually save and what of that can I give back to the customer to, to uh, really incentivize that preferential um, um, behavior? The second element to that is really the easy integration of new payment providers. And that, uh, is, is quite a necessity because there is so much new stuff coming down the innovation funnel when it comes to payments. And we see new payment types and emerging new uh, payments um, providers, mushrooming others going away. So it is really quite an important um, consideration on how easy it is to, to really integrate new payment providers that the customers want to use. And 
as the competition in the sector is intensifying, the smart routing is really something that will become more embedded in a lot of solutions. And, a part, and, and it will move away from every year or every couple of years uh, a merchant, uh, where, where a merchant is evaluating who is the best payment service provider to really turn that into a more dynamic and continuous evaluation process. And as new technologies allow you to uh, embed and integrate new providers more quickly, I think there's, uh, the dynamic of this overall process will, will change fundamentally. Lastly, I wanted to talk about the data opportunity in, um, in, in payments. And this is really, I think, one of the most interesting areas, but also one of the least understood. So, I mean, all of us are hearing about the value of data and data being the new oil or the new water. And certainly payments data is no exceptions. Actually, it's really the treasure trove. And a lot of organizations have really understood the value of payments because they tell you what customers like, what they buy, when they buy it. Um, what are their, their behaviors? What are, how reliable are they? So there's so much information that can be extracted from payments data. And today, really not a lot of, uh, not many organizations are able to, to exploit the information that is sitting in, in these. So there are obviously different areas where payments data can tell you or give you interesting insights. And I think the most prominent one is obviously around operational insights. We hear from a lot of our merchant customers how important it is to really get those more granular insights to really fine tune the way they run their payment operations. And that really goes hand in hand with massive cost savings and, so, and, and also improvement of the, of the acceptance rates. So it's, um, looking at the acceptance rates, it's really important to understand when or why customers do abandon their shopping cart, uh, or why a bank is de declining a transaction, or why the card company is declining a transaction. And these analytics really allow merchants to fix those problems and um, really fine tune uh, and optimize the process, address the underlying issues and bypass them if that's the only way to deal with those. The next area is around uh, improving fee transparency. And um, we already talked about the necessity for merchants to kind of make customers understand the, that there is cost to payment transactions. And uh, therefore, it's really important also to kind of give them an incentive to move uh, towards cheaper payment types. And this has something to do with the fee transparency. So the moment customers understand there are implications and if there are benefits for them to move from, for instance, a card pay, uh, payment or PayPal payment towards an account-based payment or a digital wallet where you have lower transaction fees, that is really something that can uh, enable a merchant to, to really um, drop the, 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 the cost of payments by, by quite, uh, quite a degree. The third area is about freeing up cash flows. And I think that is a, a much bigger and more complex topic. And that also really requires a lot more maturity when it comes to those analytics, because here we really look at how can I unlock illiquid cash that somehow caught up in my account receivables? And what can I do to really um, pull that, that locked cash out and really um, better predict my cash flow and therefore really minimize the cost of potential bridging solutions and uh, invest or get more, more return on my, on my money. And this is really a key area that a lot of banks are investing now, a lot of payment services providers are investing now to really help merchants better manage their cash flow and on top of that, obviously, also sell them their own products, such as uh, invoice factoring or uh, reconciliation services to, to really accelerate this, to the collection of, of um, um, monies. And then the last area here is around customer insights. And I think this one is really uh, probably the most far out because this is also the most complex and most diverse one and the most difficult to act upon. 
But here it's really about um, creating more context um, so that the merchant really understands why customers, uh, how customers tick, why they're spending at specific times, at specific websites, what makes them really uh, choose specific payment providers or uh, specific payment types or specific merchants. And really based on those and this understanding, get better at marketing and positioning the products um, that are relevant to the customer at a specific point of time based on their interests, based on their behaviors, based on their, their, their family, based on their life cycle, and really help them move closer to, to customers. And I mean, this is not a new area, but payments data can provide so much context in this regard. And I think here we are still at the very beginning. And here it also is important to consider the different benefits that different types of payments provide. So. Obviously, card payments, the data that are kind of associated with such a transaction are quite limited. So you know how much was spent and where it was spent, but that's pretty much it. But if you then move towards, for instance, account-based payments, a lot more data can be put or embedded in those uh, new types of, uh, of messages, payment messages. And I think that is really going to create this, this new treasure hunt for the, the value of data once you can embed more contextual information on what was bought, why it was bought, um, and, and what some of us can put really that entire transaction into context. So let's talk about the last key area. What's uh, the most important considerations to pick a payment solution that really fits your specific needs? And a lot of vendors, a lot of merchants really go out and say, hey, payments is not really core to my business. This is something that I have to do, but I want to manage it as simple as possible. And there is, there are a lot of payment service providers out there that really offer that end-to-end -end experience across all different payment types, whether that's physical, whether that's um, digital payments. But then this is obviously uh, all those, those bundled experiences um, maybe not necessarily what a specific merchant has in mind. And now we see this new generation of payment platforms being taken to market. And the platform for me is really something that can connect easily towards all different types of solutions. That's kind of consolidating data, that's consolidating everything in a single platform on which you can then run your, your um, orchestration, on which you can run your analytics and which really allows you to um, innovate and um, integrate new solutions that your customers may be asking for in, in a quick way. And all of that is really based on a more microservices-based architectures that often is powered, or that's usually powered by APIs. So the benefit of those payment platforms is really the flexibility. If you want to onboard a new payment service provider, you can easily do that within a couple of clicks um, and not have to go through a month, uh, several months of, of onboarding to kind of make that work. You can then also pick the best providers in the market and don't have to rely on, this, on these bundles that are very often good, but if you want the best in the market, you probably have to go browse from, from different um, solution providers. Already talked about the speedy implementation. It's very quick to, to drop. Uh, a payment service provider that's not working for you or where you have bad experiences, it's very quick to onboard a new one. And then I already talked about the importance of security and uh, an extension that payment service provider fraud rate. So the lower the fraud rates, the more attractive it is for the merchant because that allows you to exempt or to go for more exemptions from SCA. And generally, this is really, I think, where a lot of the competition will happening in the moving forward is that payment service providers will have to prove that they have fraud under control and they are listing really, really heavily in beefing up their, their fraud management, the fraud monitoring solutions to really get to the bottom of minimizing the cost of fraud. And this will really be a key um, differentiator moving forward. Next, obviously, that flexibility allows you to tailor the solutions that you need to your specific needs. And that's where, again, the custom analytics also come into the game. 
understanding what your customers want to use when they make a payment is giving you important pointers to what the providers that you should be partnering with, what functionalities they are interested in. And that really is helping you to fine tune your, your value proposition. And lastly, I already mentioned this, um, we are moving away from this, this more static approach where you make a decision on a payment services providers and then are stuck with him for a year or two or how many years because the cost of changing is so expensive or the, the effort is so high. And in the future with these payments platforms, that's going to be a lot more dy dynamic. It's going to be really based on a continuous evaluation of the, uh, the, the different criteria of the payment services providers, whether that's the fraud rate or the fee, um, fees that they are charging. And a couple of uh, percentage points or um, a couple of percent can really make a, a big difference here. And lastly, it's also about um, the, the acceptance rates because different providers have different acceptance rates. And ultimately for a merchant, the most important thing is that you minimize card abandon rates. So uh, acceptance rates is really uh, the, the other key consideration when you pick the right payment services provider. That takes me already to the end. Uh, so my recommendations to really, uh, when you start thinking about the future of payments in e-commerce, um, that we have those two momentum. You have the innovation and you have the regulation. And regulation is currently really trying to, um, or is as a reality, introducing more friction in that checkout process. Now, there are workarounds but what is really helping most is a data-driven strategy to really help eliminate friction from this process. This is not just on the payment side, this goes across the entire um, process or the entire checkout process. And ultimately, I think the goal is that payments will increasingly become invisible. Uh, obviously, that's much easier for recurring pay, um, customers, but increasingly, given that there's so much data known about customers, about certain transactions, about uh, payment services providers, and we have those, those, um, this, this flexibility and relationships between different providers, the, um, the, the reality is that um, with all the, the analytics running in the background, the need to really authenticate transactions is probably going down and that really will make payments invisible in the longer term, or a growing number of transactions at least invisible uh, in the longer term. Second, payments so far have not really been high on the priority list of a lot of merchants. So that leaves really a massive opportunity for efficiency improvements. Data will guide you through this process and there's a lot of opportunity to really optimize your payment operations by comparing different service providers in order to boost acceptance rates and, and really migrate your, your transaction mix towards more low cost payment types. And lastly, fraud rates, uh, the ability to uncover data insights the flexibility and speed, as well as competitive prices, are really the key considerations when it comes to deciding for the right payment partner. There is a lot of choice. There are um, there is consolidation at the same time. So the, the environment, uh, the ecosystem is constantly changing, and that really makes it extremely important to think strategically about how do you future-proof your payment operations, not just for the next two years, but for the next five to 10 years. And that means how do I get flexibility? How do I um, really get more strategic about finding the right partners? And that, that is really where the, the difficult decisions and the difficult um, priorities for merchants uh, will be to, to really um, identify the right partner strategy and payments. With that, I end my piece. I hope my piece. Thank you very much for your attention and have a great day. Bye-bye.